Oh, please, Gary, no, you're not the only philosopher. You know, and I've been reading this uh, biography of Einstein, and for the big part of his career when he made his really astounding uh, assertions, some of which he finished off later, but, you know, he was working as a patent clerk. He was an outsider. He was doing physics the way we do philosophy, outside of the academic establishment with a somewhat of a free control. But it took someone like him to be a genius and nitpick himself because that's what peer review does for the rest of us, is it helps double check us when we're not so good at that ourselves. But if we are good at double checking, then there's a certain amount of freedom that comes with that. Now, you know, my epistemology, you know, you talk about truth. My, I have truth, and one of the truths that I've investigated is the truth about truth. And the truth is that it's relative, not absolute. Okay, that, that comes from your ideas of truth, it comes from, you know, taking the objectivist ideas from truth to the logical conclusion, it comes from natural philosophy, it comes from all sorts of things. But, you know, my epistemology is meant to be very factual and truthful. It's not a poetry about, uh, that has no technical merit. It, it is, holds true of every experience I've ever had or heard about. So it is as universal as you can get. Now, part of it is that there's no absolute universals, but there are things that are true for all humans because we have brains like we all need oxygen. Okay, and this explains how we obtain and assert all of that knowledge and what it's founded on, which is not on capital T objective truth, but more on how well things work and relative truth. In other words, you have two statements and which one works better, which one's relatively more uh, adheres to uh, modeling nature, which is a better model. When you compare two truths, that's what it means to have a relative truth. Okay, so uh, yeah, your claim is is just false, you know, because you really you really beg off at certain technical areas. We're like, oh, we can't do that. Well, you know, my epistemology is the quantum mechanics of truth. Oh, but I don't like quantum mechanics. Yeah, well, sadly, it's relatively more true than the things that compete with it, and it's the same with with the, my skeptical epistemology. You know, and if you want to claim otherwise, then come up with somewhere that my skeptical epistemology, which I think you're somewhat familiar with now, fails. Okay, and the fact is you put different words on it, but your own level of, no of what you think of as your knowledge and what knowledge that you can get, it all adheres to the skeptical epistemological description. The only thing that's confusing for people is they're used to using the words in this other false, incoherent sense that doesn't make sense and things like this. And I'm thinking it would be easier to invent a new word instead of knowledge that's the relative knowledge since the old version of knowledge was never well founded. Now that we've discovered how to found it, we just use that definition. That that's the idea. So, yeah, no, um, I'm sorry. My philosophy is very technical and uh, it holds together and is coherent in, in every epistemological question. And if you want to deny that, then show me the dilemma that can't be dealt with.